symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. This is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we'll be talking about one of my favorite matches of all time. But first, let me introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How you doing today, Paul? Kurt, I'm doing great, man. We are just a day away uh, as we sit here recording this uh, behind the curtain. This will release on Sunday to the broader audience, but you and I will have just been in Wisconsin together watching you throwing out that big first pitch. But you said it, man. Today it's a big day because we're talking all things SummerSlam 2002 and that match that you had versus one of your favorites of all time, Rey Mysterio. Definitely. I love Rey Mysterio. He's one of the greatest Lucha Libre wrestlers of all time. Well, buddy, I want to help set the stage for our audience uh, because there's a lot to unpack here as far as kind of the buildup, uh, getting the mat to that match. We covered Vengeance 2002 last month where you had that awesome triple threat match with Taker and The Rock even did a full watch along uh, of the match for our Patreons over on ad free shows. So by the way, if you haven't seen it already, you can go over there adfreeshows.com and check out Kurt as he does that entire watch along of the match. But on the SmackDown following vengeance from Indianapolis, it opened with you versus Mark Henry in a battle of the former 1996 Olympians. How much fun did you have working with big Mark Henry? Mark was good. He was really good. I, I enjoyed working with him. He was such a big, strong guy, uh, really safe though. Surprisingly for his strength and his size, very safe wrestler. Well, listen, Mark, uh, Mark Henry gets the win via DQ after Brock Lesnar interferes and hits the F five, just to spite you after the first little teaser we saw between you and, and, and Brock at vengeance. But Brock then Kurt, he makes his way over to SmackDown after being originally on raw and you two, you had to be excited for Brock moving over to the blue brand finally. Yeah, yeah. Brock was a big name, you know, coming out of college, winning the NCAA championships in Division I, uh, coming to the WWE. He had an incredible look. He was a monster, big, you know, 320 pounds. Just uh, he had all the tools that Vince McMahon was looking for. And I knew when he came in that they were going to push him really hard. And I was excited about working with him on SmackDown. Nah, and we were all excited as fans because we knew it was coming. We saw the teasers and couldn't wait for you two to clash. Uh, but, Kurt, this show also features Ray Mysterio's debut on WWE TV where he defeated Chavo Guerrero, which WWE, by the way, man, they just did a huge celebration for Ray, celebrating his 20th anniversary since his debut. What were your first impressions of Ray? Did you get to see any of his work in WCW? Yeah, I saw him work in WCW. He, he was incredible. What makes him special is his size. He is really, really small. Uh, you know, and the crazy thing is when he wrestles in that ring, he, people always believe he has a chance to win. As, as, you know, he's 140 pounds. This kid should never have a chance of beating anybody. But because of his athleticism and his lucha background, uh, Ray is really special. Just a special individual. Nobody else like him. He was the best Lib Lucha Libre wrestler I've ever been in the ring. There's no doubt about it, man. When you look back at wrestling and some of the, you know, breakout performers and stars, he is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Somebody his size, and you said it, 140 pounds and what he could do in the ring, but his ability to wrestle up. And what I mean by that is wrestle with guys much bigger than he is and make you believe that he could still win. That was the magic and is the magic of Rey Mysterio. It definitely is. That, that's what he was known for. Everybody believed he could win any match he was in. Well, listen, the SmackDown six being led by Paul Heyman is really starting to form here with you, Ray, Benoit, Edge, Eddie, and Chavo. When you see the core workers Paul had for the brand, you knew you were about to put together some freaking ridiculously awesome matches, weren't you? Yeah, the SmackDown six, we made a name for ourselves and uh, we earned that reputation. We all had incredible chemistry together. Every match that we have was four or five stars. It was incredible. 
Well, listen, they're still talking about you possibly going to the 2004 Olympics at this point. And uh, so we have to cover this because this was news. It was Meltzer news. It was Observer news. And he had an article in the Observer around this time. And I'm going to kind of read it over to you and we'll get you some feedback from you. He says, Angle did an interview uh, for the July 28th Pittsburgh Tribune Review, again, talking about potentially going for the Olympics. At this point, most of the company are of the opinion he's not going to do it. His comment was, some days I say I'm going to do it and others I think no way. His wife, Karen, was also interviewed saying she doesn't want him to do it, noting that, that in the past three years, Angle suffered more injuries than in 20 years of wrestling amateur she also smartly pointed out that he's had six years off as established as one of the company's biggest stars. And if he fails, it could hurt his pro career. Kurt admitted it's a very touchy period to be thinking of leaving and said he'd have to make up his final decision by the end of the year. Angle was given the green light by Vince McMahon to do so, which you've talked about on this show repeatedly and was seriously considering it. But that's when business was good and the depth on top was much stronger. While he would be bucking big odds going back because of his name value and celebrity status, if he were to make the team, it would bring amateur wrestling, the WWE, and Angle himself more nationwide publicity than nearly anything that he has gotten, the three of them have gotten collectively. Angle going for the gold, and this is a long shot, would draw enormous TV ratings if he should win. He'd go back to pro wrestling with the chance to parlay that into becoming perhaps the biggest mainstream star in history. It's so true, Kurt. Angle said that he retired from amateur wrestling before he hit his peak and would wrestle uh, at 212 pounds. If he were to do so, he'd probably relocate to either Colorado Springs to train with the Olympic wrestling team or Iowa to train with that team. Kurt, we've asked it before. We're asking it again here because it's making headlines at this time period. But were you seriously considering going for the Olympics at this point? Yes, I was. I was seriously considering it. Uh, I thought about it day and night all the time. The problem is what Dave Meltzer said. He's right. If I would have won the Olympic gold medal in 2004, I would have become the biggest star of all time. <sighs> but if I don't win the Olympic gold medal, yeah. even a bronze or a silver, I'm screwed. Yeah. You know, I just lost my, my reputation of being the Olympic gold medalist and not that being a, a silver medalist or bronze medalist is bad. It's awesome. But to, 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 you know, lower yourself to another, uh, standard of metal, uh, the following Olympics, uh, is going to make people remember, Hey, he didn't win. He lost. So I didn't want to take that chance by leaving the company and going to the, uh, the Olympics and, uh, and, and it was a long shot. I mean, I, I really, uh, the, for me to win the gold medal, it was like a thousand to one odds. It really was because I was out of the, the, the sport for eight years and, and uh, dude, you know, yeah. come back and, and, and get yourself ready. It's going to take a lot more than a year of training to do that. And dude, you're absolutely right, man. People's dream athletes dream is to go out on top. Mm -hmm. You did. Why risk it? And, and, and blemish what you all, what, what half your promos referenced. I win the gold medal with the broken freaking neck. Well, then what you lost it with, with, a, with your neck, not broken. How do you come back I off that? And I lost the gold. Yeah. Medal. Right. How do you, how do you, so you're right. I love it. And you're absolutely right. It looking back, it was the right, it was the right decision and worked out, you know, the best for you. So listen, we move on. It's SmackDown. It's August 1st. It was taped in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you and Hulk Hogan get into a tizzy about both wanting to face Brock Lesnar and buddy, we have the first clip of the week this week with you and Hogan SmackDown. It's August 1st, 2002. So let's check it out. Brock Lesnar, the next big thing. Former NCAA champion. Whoop de damn do. NCAA championships back when you were playing Hungry Freaking Hippos, Buster. <laughs> hungry, Hungry Hippo. Now, don't get me wrong, Lester. You got a ton of talent. But let me ask you one question. Where are your gold medals? Oh. 
and you would actually come down into the ring last week and get me disqualified and then have the audacity to tell me that my days of being the number one man here on SmackDown are over? Let me tell you something, you stupid cave beast. If you think you're the number one man, then why don't you come down here right now and we'll see who the number one man is. Because you're looking at the number one man. The number one man is Kurt Angle, and I'm gonna kick your butt right now. Oh, God, God, God. Wah, 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 wah. you missed most of last week's show, let me give you a little update right now. You see, while you were out whining and crying like a little baby with your knees knocking together just because Brock Lesnar happened to mention your name, I was out there trying to regain my tag team titles with my brother Rock when Brock Lesnar snuck up behind me and f 5 my butt right in the center of that ring, dude. So the way things go, Kurt Angle, I suggest to you that you, my brother, leave that ring right now. Because if anybody, if anybody is going to wrestle Brock Lesnar tonight, it's going to be Hollywood Hulk Hogan, brother. This is a joke, right? You want to face Lesnar. What are you going to do? Challenge him in a game of shuffleboard? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Hogan. I'm facing Lesnar. And if you have a problem with it, why don't you come down here right now and do something about it? <laughs> Competition, then tonight, in that very ring, it will be Kurt Angle versus Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Tonight! Awesome! And the winner of that match will face one week from tonight the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. Oh, high stakes tonight! Good luck, gentlemen. Hogan and Kurt Angle! Oh, second step. Hey, that's fine. Me versus Hogan? I have no problem with that. Because I'm gonna do the same thing I did at King of the Ring. I'm gonna make the immortal Hulk Hogan tap out. And Hogan, just because I feel a little sorry for you, I promise. I'll make it quick. Oh. Holy cow, what's this career? Now it's the Angles. Right now, Angles getting his butt wet. Well, these two meet later oh. tonight, but won't wait until later tonight. Oh. Oh. There we go. It's going to be Kurt and Hogan buddy, by the way, just here, here you are in the middle of a WWE ring, which this Monday night, we're going to see you in Pittsburgh at raw. That's right. I'm going to be on raw. <laughs> I'm ready for it, man. How did that all come together? I got to pause here and ask how that all came to be. 
Well, it's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They knew Kurt Angle lived in Pittsburgh, and they called me up and said, you want to be a guest on the show? I said, of course I do. Well, hell yeah, exactly. So do you know what you're doing yet? Or you just know, Hey, I'm going to be there and find out when I get there Monday. I will find out when I get there. Definitely. Uh, well, we can't wait to see you, man. And, and I'm sure Pittsburgh is ready to give you a reception like no other. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, they will. Listen, can't wait. So excited to see that and them uh, pushing you. And, uh, as I saw you in the ring, making your faces and thinking about Brian Gewurz and his tremendous writing. And, uh, you know, we were able to have him on the show. I'm like, wait a minute, we're going to get to see Kurt here again soon, uh, in, in Pittsburgh. So man, that's awesome. So listen, it's you versus Hogan, a rematch from King of the ring set up for later in the night. And of course, because we're prepared, we have the ending of that match. So let's check nice. it out. The end of that match. Here we go. Hogan needs to try to regroup, get to the ropes on the rope, but Angle shoot him off, reverse. Angle off the rope. Move to the face. Move to the chin. This could be it. Oh, it's going for that big leg drop. He dropped the leg pole. Here it comes. And Angle quickly to his feet. Angle slam. For the Angle slam. And he got it. It's over. He hooks the leg. And it's busy. Angle and Lester next week. No. The kick out of that angle slam. But how much does Hogan have left? And Angle's kicking it into a higher gear right now. The angle there it is. In. It's the fourth quarter, and this is the part of the game that Angle loves. Well, Hollywood Hulk Hogan again tapped to the ankle lock. And Hogan's got no choice, but look at this. Hogan's, he's on the ropes. Too close to the ropes, but Kurt Angle pulls Hogan off back into the center of the ring. Deja vu, just like a king of the ring. Hogan's going to tap again. Angle's going to beat Hogan again. Look at this. The arms up. Close to Tempe. Is he going to tap out to the ankle lock yet again? Switch it in, Kurt. I want to see Kurt and Lester. Switch it in, Kurt. But what about the pride and the resilience of this great champion? Who right around the angle into the referee. The resilience of Hogan. But has the damage been done? Accidentally angled, dropping the referee. Right. Hogan got the three to grab a steel chair. Steel chair. The referee's down. Angle's got a steel chair. And a bull's chair off the skull. Back chair off the skull. Back fire. Hogan off the wall. Leg drive. Leg drop. Hogan's got him. Into the cover. One. There's no referee. Two. Three. Hogan should be facing Lester. You can rest down. You can count forever. It don't matter. Referee's in Lala Land. Oh, my God. Look at this. Lester. So there it is, Kurt, which by the way, you gave Hogan an angle slam in that match and that you picked him up, man. That was a lot. Kurt <laughs> he angle. Was, he was heavy. 
I, I did notice that. That was the, all me. Usually it was up for me, but Hogan, you know, he doesn't have that great elite that late in his career. So sure. Yeah, you had to horse him up, man. It was pretty rough. You horsed him up. That was the first thing I noticed. And then the other thing I thought as I watched that is, man, how spoiled were we as fans getting to see some of the matchups that we got to saw see back in oh, those days? Oh, I know for free on TV. Yeah, uh, you know, seeing Brock Lesnar, Hulk Hogan, and Kurt Angle in that <laughs> ring at one time—that's incredible. That, yeah, these aren't even pay-per-views. So listen, this puts an end to your feuds with Hogan and also with Lesnar for the time being with him. The following week, SmackDown was in Richmond, Virginia, and end up being Hogan's last night with the company after K Fay being put on the shelf from Lesnar. What do you remember uh, as far as the circumstances about Hogan departing WWE here uh, after this comeback run? Uh, you know what? To be honest with you, I really don't know what happened. I know there was a falling out between him and Vince McMahon. I don't know what the reason was for, but, uh, you know, he did leave the company and that was it. Until he, I think he did come back again, right? Yeah, he's come back and, you know, made appearances here or there, but this was that big comeback. He had won the you know, won the championship and this yeah, and world that. title. Yes. Yeah. Well, listen, this is also the SmackDown that we now see the build starting to happen for you for SummerSlam. And the show kicks off with a rematch from June with you and Cena and Chris Benoit interferes for the DQ. Then Ray Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero and edge get involved to set up a six man tag match for later on. Let's take a look at the ending and your promo after can't wait to see this one. Kirk, Kirk, obviously, I mean, it was an outcome that nobody expected. I, I mean, of all the possible outcomes that could have happened in the match, who would have thought Rey Mysterio pinning Kurt Angle? Kirk? I just got pinned by a freaking 12-year-old. <laughs> what the heck is going on around here? People running into my matches, referee screw me left and right. I don't, what do you mean, referee screwing you left and right? You even watch the matches? Rey Mysterio was the illegal man. He was the illegal man. He's probably an illegal citizen. And if he had any integrity whatsoever, he'd come forth and forfeit the match. <laughs> but I guess integrity isn't a part of his extremely limited vocabulary, is it? But I'll tell you something that should be in Mysterio's vocabulary. Broken ankle. Which is something Rey Mysterio is going to experience firsthand, courtesy of your Olympic hero. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Get out of my face. Tough. Oh, so good, Kurt. <laughs> I can't believe I got pinned by a 12-year-old. <laughs> So listen, this sets up you versus that 12 year old kid who pinned you Ray Mysterio for SummerSlam. But looking back on this, this is so much fun. And, uh, it was fun seeing Cena in his little Tar Heel blue shorts. You know, he's still, Prototype, not in, yes. yeah, he's still not in his gimmick yet. This is what Dave Meltzer had to say. He said, this will be a big test for both guys to put together a match people can buy. It's not a talent issue, obviously, but a visual issue. There were people arguing against this match for that reason and trying to push Mysterio versus Tajiri, this was next and put on SmackDown last week instead. Is this true what Dave writes? Do you recall anyone in particular being for and against your first match with Ray? Honestly, nobody ever talked to me about it. They didn't say they questioned my ability to work with Ray and if it would be good or not. Uh, all I knew is that Ray and I would have a great match. I knew that firsthand, uh, even though I never wrestled Lucha style. This was my first Lucha match. I never wrestled with another Lucha guy before. I was nervous as hell going in there because, you know, I, I know I got to catch Ray and carry him and, you know, he sure. does all his flips and, 
all his stunts and I got to keep him safe. And that was my first priority. But um, I knew Ray and I were going to hit it out of the park. Uh, there was no doubt about it. So you hadn't heard any of that visual no, nothing concerns about nothing. Uh, them being concerned about the match. No. Okay. Kurt, I want to pause right here and share something that we often talk about on the show and that's reliability. You were so reliable throughout your career, but it's also important to be reliable in life. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to my automobile, getting to where I need to be on time and without a hiccup is paramount. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. And that my friends is where car shield provides a solution. Car Shield makes it easy and affordable to protect your car from expensive repairs. I know because they've done it for me. And that's just for starters. Car Shield is the number one auto protection company in the US and they offer protection plans for around 100 bucks a month. The plans cover more parts than ever whether your car has 5000 miles or 150000 miles. Let me tell you how simple it is to get your car fixed. When you need a repair, you choose the mechanic and Car Shield's administrators handle the rest. That's it. You don't have to deal with the paperwork or headaches you're taken care of. Same goes if your car breaks down and you're stuck on the side of the road. Everybody hates that. Plans through CarShield also include coast to coast roadside assistance. CarShield's administrators are there for you with rental car options, which is fantastic, and trip reimbursement at no extra cost too. So get coverage today and you'll lock in your price now and here it is, the price will never go up. That means as long as you own your car no matter how old it is, you're protected from the rising costs of parts and repairs for your vehicle. And man, are we ever seeing rising car uh, costs right now for parts, et cetera. So CarShield helps protect my wallet from expensive car repairs, and they'll do the same for you. Go to carshield.com slash podcast. That's the key to start your plan and lock in your pricing forever. That's carshield.com slash podcast. A deductible may apply. Well, Kurt, listen, WWE went to Australia for the first time since 1986. Let that sink in. And it's August 10th, 2002 with the big show at Melbourne Colonial Stadium. You defeated Tess that night, but the show wasn't televised. However, WWE released most of the show on DVD. Your match, though, didn't make the final cut and has never been seen to this day. Wow. It's a hidden gem. No <laughs> one's ever seen it. Do you know the reason why they edited your match out? No, I'm surprised because Tess was a pretty big name back then. Yeah. And uh, so was I. And I thought, you know, we're having this match. I thought that we at least make the DVD, but we didn't, unfortunately. Wow. Kurt Angle not making the cut on a DVD back you then. Believe what, that the, shit? what the hell's up with that? I mean, you were in your prime, buddy. <laughs> You're damn right. Uh, well, so we, maybe a tape trader. Somebody's got to find it. Somebody maybe had a handy cam out there. We can find it on YouTube. <laughs> but what do you remember? Talk to us about Australia. Was it your first time going there? Do you remember anything yes. about that trip? Um, it was my first time going there. It's very identical to the United States. A lot of things down there. Um, you know, the only difference is it's in the Southern hemisphere and we're in the Northern hemisphere, but you know, Christian and Lance storm and I, we went to the zoo. We visited the animals. I saw giraffes. I saw koala bears. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I mean, the only difference between the United States and Australia are the difference in animals. Yeah. You got to see the Australian animals. It was pretty cool. Nah, that's awesome. They did film some bits down there with you guys yes, doing they that. Did. Yeah. And, uh, man, that's awesome. I've never been, but, uh, I heard it's beautiful. Uh, I, I do a show with Mike Kyoto on ad free and he says, Paul, it's one of the most beautiful countries that I've visited. Very clean. Yes. Well, listen, let's come on back into the United States. You guys are back in the States for SmackDown. It's uh, August 15th. It was taped in Seattle. And then this clip that we're going to see here in a moment, Ray officially challenges you to SummerSlam. Kurt, he wants you in the ring. And then you and Mark Henry go at it again. So here we go. Let's take a look. It's August 15th, 2002. We're building the SummerSlam, baby. Let's check it out. Last week on SmackDown, Rey Mysterio was able to get to one, two, three and pick up the victory. Hold on a and second. Let's make one thing clear, Boyd. Just because some 12 year old kid stopped mowing lawns and put on some kooky mask and illegally clocked me from behind when I wasn't looking doesn't mean squat. Rey Mysterio is a cheater. And cheaters never win. Therefore, his win doesn't count. Oh, speak of the devil. Sorry, son. You know the rules. 
Must be this high to talk to Kurt Angle. Maybe next year. Kurt, are you saying my win didn't count? Nope. So how about uh, me and you hit it off at SummerSlam so I can make it count? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, you serious? Yes. You. you want to take me, Olympic gold medalist? You want to take me on at SummerSlam? In what? Dwarf tossing? <laughs> I'm on a roll. No, no. I want you in a match, Kurt, so I can beat you again, and I can shut you up once and for all. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a little man with an attitude. You want a piece of me at SummerSlam? La freaking Cucaracha, you're on, pal. Yeah, yeah, you make sure you let Dorothy and uh, the Tin Man and all the munchkins know that your butt is mine, little man. You hear me? Your butt is mine at SummerSlam. What do you call a little man? Little man? You call me little man? Yes. World's strongest man, huh? What was that for? Weightlifting? Or body odor? You want a piece of me, Mark Henry? I'll tell you what. I'm tired of talking to people tonight. I want some action. You want a piece of me? I say you and me right now. What do you say, Mark Henry? You wanna know what I say, Kurt? Yeah. Follow the yellow brick road. That's what I say, little man. This should be the brand new ball game, Common Cole. Mark Henry's leg, he's hurting. Oh, right there, hook again. Another clip again by Angle. This is the second time the Angle has been locked in. Can Mark Henry kick out of this one? I don't see no strong pass on Mark Henry's chest. few things first of all how much fun were you having with these backstage oh segments and stuff you know what i'm not gonna lie to you i crack myself up when i watch myself <laughs> i now, know you do i don't even realize the shit i said back then it's <laughs> I know. just like the writers are so awesome you know all i had to do is repeat what they said and that, i mean my deliveries were pretty good but i yeah you know i just sit there and laugh at myself like what the <laughs> i can't believe i i was I don't want to put myself over. I no, just, but you can. I can't believe it was that entertaining. That's it fun. was. That's why people loved you, Kurt. You were natural. Uh, they love to hate me, actually. <laughs> but that's but that was that was the point. That was the yeah. point. You were hilarious. But the facials, the delivery, ah, oh, so good, I wish man. I could do that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so does your wife and kids. You'd be making a lot more money. <laughs> I'm <right>. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, you, uh, you were nailing it and you looked like, and I can imagine back then you had to genuinely be having some fun just doing some of this stuff. Listen, uh, up until 2005, I was having the time of my life every single week at TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't until I got problems with painkillers that things sure. started and the injuries started building up, but I'm telling you, man, I had a blast on that show. Oh, it was so good. And I love watching you watch it. Cause I know it was such a long time for you. Yeah. It's almost like you're rewatching it for the first time. And oh yes. It, it, it's so good. Feels like it, yeah, it is. So listen, Meltzer reported that when Ray did the, uh, hurricane Rana there. Oh, oh and I got to ask hard way you bleeding. 
Yes, yes. Rey Mysterio, uh, he, he wears these knee braces. They're big as hell. They're underneath his pants. And uh, when he went to do the Hakurano off the top rope, the brace hit me on top of the head, and I grabbed him and rolled through. Uh, and uh, I ended up getting there's, there's a scar here, about 14 stitches. It was, it was the real deal, man. <laughs> Well, listen, here's the deal. Meltzer said that that Hurricane Rana, it took three times to get it right, but they had to edit it for TV. So talk about that. Well, I messed up the first two times. <laughs> so that was on you then? Yes, yes. And actually, uh, uh, what's crazy is the first time he did it, that's when I cut my head. But the blood didn't start coming out till after the third time. Okay. So it wasn't the third time that he hit me with it that my head started bleeding. It was the first one. And it just took a while to start bleeding. So there you go. So first time, no, nope. so Kurt Angle is not perfect. He makes mistakes. Yes, I do. I had to do it three times. <laughs> Write this episode down. SummerSlam 2002. We're about halfway into the show. Kurt admits it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but listen, so he, he nicks you, he hits you and, and you get it hard way the first time. And then they say, what does someone say? Hey, your guys are going to have to do that again. And then you do it again. And then you're like, nope, still not good. How's that all kind of playing out in the ring? Well, you know, the first time I caught him and, and I, I dropped him on his back. Oh God. And so it, it was, uh, the first two were just complete failures and the, okay. third, the third one. And you have to remember, I've never wrestled like this before. I yes. never did a Herkarana and, and rolled through. Like I, I didn't know how to wrestle Lucha style. And I uh, thank God I did wrestle Ray a few more times after that before SummerSlam. So I kind of got a feel for what he was doing. And listen, man, that also is why. You know, SmackDown back then being taped kind of worked for stuff yeah, like that. Yes, it did. You know, it's crazy. I, I never looked at it as a tape show. I always felt like it was live and I always treated it like it was live. But you know, you have that safety net if something happens. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes well, listen, that's bad because it's in the back of your head. There's a safety net. I can make mistakes. And then you start messing with your head a little bit and then you start making more mistakes. Uh, that's a good point. If you, you're, you're right. It's like, if you're going to do something live, you get one crack at it and right. yeah, that's it, buddy. So I want to ask you a little bit about Mark Henry before we move on here. Uh, he would become a star in WWE, not until uh, several years after this. Why do you think it kind of never clicked with him for such a long time at the beginning? Listen, man, every wrestler is different. You know, I picked it up my first year. I'm, I'm one in a you know trillion, uh, that doesn't happen like very often. I mean, the only other person I can think of was Brock Lesnar, but he did, he trained for two years before he got on TV. Um, Mark Henry, it just took him a little more time. He yeah. just wasn't getting it. And you know, the light bulb went off and this is crazy. He was nine and a half years in on a 10 year contract and the light bulb went off because WWE would have probably let him go. But he, in that nine and a half years, he started wrestling better and he, he started getting it. And, uh, and, and that's when they renewed his contract. And he ended up wrestling for another 10 years. So he was kind of very blessed uh, for the light bulb to go off right before his contract ended. And I, I'm so happy for Mark because he ended up keeping his job and getting a new contract. He did. And he he did. deserved it. He yeah. did. Absolutely. Big fan of Mark and all of his fun characters from sexual chocolate on through <laughs> the rest of it. World's strongest man. So listen, on the go home SmackDown from Fayetteville, you had a pretty damn good match with Billy Kidman. And what was your only singles match together? What do you remember working with Kidman? Kidman, I loved him. I loved working with him. Uh, I think he was the best cruiserweight in, in the company. Uh, and he wasn't a small kid. He was pretty big. I mean, he was, you know, 205 pounds. He wasn't little by any means, but he had a lot of talent. I loved working with him. And you had no issues putting him over or anything no. like that? No, nah. no I, I never had any issue of putting anyone over. And I knew it would help the storyline. All right. Well, speaking of the storyline, we have the clip of the ending and Ray gets involved as we continue to build to that SummerSlam match. Let's check it out. What the hell? Abel's got a steel chair. Perfect time for Abel to do some damage with that chair. The ref can't see it. Kurt Angle's frustration is mounting. Steel chair. Miss it. The referee is dazed. If the ref had come to a split second earlier, Kidman would have had a huge upset. Outstanding matchup by Kidman. 
and Kurt Angle right now on SmackDown. Billy Kidman in the driver's seat. It's his matchup to win. Angle into the corner. Here comes Kidman. But he made a mistake. Into the Angle slam. Out of front Angle slam. Beautiful. Wait a minute. Mysterio. Mysterio to the top right. Suit. <laughs> this is where Mysterio, the Mysterio, like, I'm in front of him. <laughs> Ray Mysterio has got Kurt Angle completely off his game. Kurt was completely distracted. Angle's concentration was busted. The referee is administering the 10 count. Kurt Angle still got a match going on in the ring. Kurt, you got a match. Get your butt back in the ring. is underway still. Kurt Angle's been counted out. Come on. The winner of this match is the result of a count out. Billy Kidman. Kurt Angle has been frustrated, embarrassed, and humiliated by Rey Mysterio yet again. Kurt Angle's just reading the referee to riot act. I thought Kurt made it back, but I referee didn't think so. Oh, no. I would not want to be Billy Kidman right now. Kurt Angle with a German suplex to Kidman. Fourth one in a match. And now Kurt Angle beginning to take his frustration out in a fit of rage on Billy Kidman. The Olympic gold medalist is beating the snot out of Billy Kidman. And now that's a message that Angle sent to Mysterio. Come on. Come SummerSlam, if my name is Rey Mysterio, it wouldn't be. Mysterio's in trouble, and so's Billy Kidman. Angle slam over the top rope for Kidman. Kurt Angle, man, he's, he's not a happy home. Well, Kurt, for those watching and were able to see it on YouTube, you could see the uh, the stitches there in your head that you are <laughs> yeah, talking about. 14 of them <laughs> right uh. across the top of my head. So there you go. There's the interference by Ray furthering the storyline between you and Ray for the buildup for SummerSlam. The night before Kurt SummerSlam, they tried out you versus Ray in Albany and reports were ready for this. It was the show stealer <laughs> short, but fast paced with Mysterio getting most of the offense and then losing clean with the ankle lock. How important for you was it to finally have that one good run with him before getting into that big pay-per-view match? Well, I had to feel Ray out. Yeah. You know? Like I said before, I never wrestled Lucha style. And, uh, you know, when you wrestle somebody at a pay-per-view, you want to make sure you have good chemistry with them. So you have a, usually one or two or three practice matches at the house shows before the pay-per-view, just to show that you guys got good chemistry. Cause you're not going to do the same exact thing at the pay-per-view, but there are some things you will do that you can carry on to the pay-per-view. And, uh, I knew Ray and I would have an incredible match. Man, and, and it cannot be understated how important I think, you know, with obviously the pandemic and things that have gone on, certain wrestling companies don't do house shows anymore. Well, listen, if you're just putting two people together for the first time on TV, you're going to expect botches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just going to happen. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't have practice with them. Yeah. At the house shows. Yeah. And, it's going to happen. You're definitely right. Yeah. And we see that now on some televised shows and it's just like, well, Hey, you're not having them work at all, not even on some of your low, lower, you know, stream shows or whatever, then you're going to expect that to happen. So it is very important. I'm glad, you know, it worked out. You guys were able to do that. And so now here we are. It's SummerSlam 2002. Kurt, this is one of my favorite pay-per-views of all time. You think about you and Ray, this is Hunter and, uh, an HBK. This is Brock and rock. This is such a great card. And, uh, so here great we go. List of wrestlers on this card. Yeah. Whew, Hall of Famers left and right. August 25th from the Nassau Coliseum and you and Ray are going to open up the pay-per-view. What did you think about it? Opening up in front of the Nassau crowd, which at times were reported to be a very quiet crowd. What were you thinking with you and Ray ready to kick things off? Oh, I, I knew we would get the crowd. I knew we'd get the crowd into it. Uh, you know, Ray is such a talented individual. Uh, at least I knew I could work with him because of the night before and uh, we were ready to put this match on, and it was going to be a high-paced match, a lot of action. Uh, that's what we did. We tried to do that so we could get the fans into the pay-per-view because when you wrestle first, that's the second most important match of the night right. behind the main event. You have to get the crowd ready and going, and that's what we did. 
Kurt, you certainly did. This is our final clip of the week. It's the last few minutes uh, from you and Ray at SummerSlam. Let's take a look at this amazing match. He may have been caught off guard and Mysterio hopes to capitalize, but Ray Ray's got to fly to have a chance in this match. Ray Mysterio bringing the fight to Kurt Angle. Up over the top, went for the sunset flip. Can he get him over? No. Kyle missed with the right hand. Hit the mat. Oh, a belly to belly throw by Kurt Angle, who again returned his control, and now he says it's done. That's it. Good night, Irene. Goodbye, Mysterio. Put up a hell of a fight. That's the signal. This is the end. Mysterio slowly to his feet. Kurt Angle stalking his opponent. Angle slam! Went for the angle slam. The arm drag. <laughs> Can you believe that? Wicked! And the Kurt Angle over the top hole. And That's Mysterio the now gains valuable time to catch his breath. That's the mistake I was talking about. Angle getting too cocky. And will this mistake allow Rey Mysterio to regain his composure and have a chance for a huge upset over Kurt Angle? Mysterio's got to shake it off. This Mysterio's got to shake it off. Now's the opportunity to take another look. Went for the angle slam. Watch the eye by Mysterio. And Mysterio just took Angle out with a shot to the knees. And Rey Ray's going to fly. And the referee says, the referee trying to prevent Mysterio. I, I, I agree with the people. That's a rock. Oh, and comes Mysterio! Whoa! Over the top rope, Rey Mysterio! A rolling heel right over the top rope, hit the angles, kiss him! Sort of like a rolling senton, and you gotta love Rey Mysterio! Check out the aerodynamic Rey Mysterio! Uh oh, look at this! Top rope, oh, Mysterio! Oh, the spring that's it, this could do it! The leg drops it's over the angle! And angle! Fully behind Rey Mysterio. You gotta take a hat off the Kurt Angle. Pure toughness to kick out of that huge leg drop. You know, Mysterio's like an amusement park ride. You gotta keep your eye on him up and down, up and down, all over the place. When Lion Mysterio, Mysterio through the open legs of Kurt Angle, shot to the midsection. Angle looks to ground Mysterio again. Look at this. <laughs> Bad spot with Angle. Oh, face first. Got the ankle lock. And the ankle lock locked in by Mysterio, who counters. Nice counter. A tremendous counter. Oh, here we go. Brace yourself. 619. 619 connects. Pedro on Dream Street. Angles up. Angles up. Look at this. Angles down. The West Coast Pulse guy. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, he just kicked out before the count of three. What a match. Ray Mysterio connected with the West Coast Pop. And Kurt Angle just kicked out. Get him, Ray. Go get him, Mysterio. Don't wait with Kurt Angle. Ow. He'll kick to the chin, and Mysterio, he can smell it. He can taste it. A huge upset on the horizon for the cruiserweight. I know Mysterio's going outside. I can buy a pin Mysterio so for cover here, but Mysterio wants to finish off. Kurt Angle. Mysterio to the top rope. Mysterio going to fly. He's measuring Kurt Angle. Mysterio perched, and then Kurt Angle. Oh, he looked like he was going to go for that running belly to belly. He was doing it. <laughs> A shot to the chin. Kurt, I don't think Kurt Angle knows where he is. Uh, Kurt Angle's out of it, Cole. Look, he's, he's who is he? Ray Mysterio. What is he going to do here? Who the hell knows? Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. Angle counter. Oh, oh. Angle counter. Angle lock. The angle lock is locked in. Beautiful, wicked counter by Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle found to break the ankle. Mysterio stretching. Can oh, he get to the bottom? What a match, Kurt. You hear that crowd, that quiet crowd in Nassau? They weren't so quiet, were they? (laughs) No, man. You had to be extremely thrilled with the way that turned out. I was, and so was Vince McMahon. He literally hugged both of us. And I mean, he was like, this match is the best opening match I've ever seen. And he's the one that told me it was the second most important match of the night. The the head first match, yeah. And and as I'm watching that, Ray can do so many things, counters, but I'm also thinking for you, he's a guy that whether you're suplexing, belly to back, overhead, throwing around, you got to be loving that. Oh, he has a way out. Everything I do. That's why we had such great chemistry. You know, I go to do something in angle slam, he'd arm drag out of it. And, you know, we go and do another spot. 
Ray and I had great chemistry together. But not only that, just his size and weight, he's got to be easy to kind of fling around and do some of that stuff with. He this is, ain't the big yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's easy to get him up. I mean, he yeah. literally is 140, 150 pounds. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's easy. awesome. So uh, Meltzer said Kurt Angle beat Rey Mysterio in nine minutes, 20 seconds. They clicked and had a tremendous opener, real fast pace early with good reversals by uh, Mysterio off Angle's moves, as you said. Mysterio did a halo dr a dive off the back of the ref on an angle and on the floor after the ref seemingly got in the way of his first dive, which we got to see here. Mysterio got a great near fall with a West Coast pop after the 619. Finish saw Angle block a Frankensteiner off the top and turn it into the ankle lock. Uh, Dave Meltzer gave it a he gave it three and three quarter. Man, that's got to at least be over four stars. <laughs> I, it was maybe, so maybe good. Maybe it just wasn't enough time for him. Who knows? I think Dave Meltzer was having an off night. Uh, <laughs> he was in a bad mood. He was in a bad mood. But listen, the two big matches that night were Sean, like I said, returning after four years to defeat Triple H. And then you had Lesnar becoming champ for the first time, defeating The Rock. What do you recall from those matches? After your match with Ray, do you remember anything about that night? Were you watching on the monitors oh, paying attention? Those matches were incredible. Sean and Hunter, they had an amazing match, and rightfully so. I mean, those guys have been working together for like 20-something years up until then. Uh, but, but Rock and Brock, they also had an incredible match. Uh, I knew those guys would have amazing chemistry. Rock and Brock were great together, and uh, it was a huge win for Brock Lesnar. I was really happy for him, and I knew that eventually him and I would go. And you would, and there you go. And and you got to think, hey, maybe if Sean's you know healthy again, you might have an opportunity to wrestle with him, which you did. Hey, listen, everybody wants to work with Sean. There you go. <laughs> He's the guy that everyone wants to work with, and I wanted to too. Well, Kurt, such a great event. I have really enjoyed going back and as always watching the vignettes and then watching the match build, but you and Ray tore it down at SummerSlam 2002. We do have some fan questions, so we're going to jump into those. First one is Instagram, a wrestling historian. Was there talk of Ray Mysterio winning instead? Thanks in advance. No, there wasn't. Uh, and I think this is part of the reason why. Uh, when they introduce talent from WCW into WWE, Vince wants you to know, hey, you're coming to my company and you're not going to get over until I tell you to. So, you know, when Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit, they came in larger than life, they main evented for the first couple of weeks and then they got pulled down to the opening card status and they had to work their ways back up. Same with Rey Mysterio. And I knew that, uh, that me beating Ray was part of the reason why he came from WCW. Vince just wanted, he has that way about him that if you're not a WWE guy, he's going to make sure you understand and know, and that, that he's going to push you when he wants to push you. Yeah. Richie asked a very similar question. Was it considered that they have Ray win and extend the program? So you guys could get uh, a longer match eventually on another pay-per-view. Well, well th that's the thing. I mean, Ray already beat me once it was a tag match, but he beat me so that we're one-to-one. -one. We could have had a blow off match, but they didn't have any plans for that. If there they you know. did, they would have done it. All right. Alan Jackson's up next. Where does Kurt rank this summer slam? And how was the backstage feeling after Brock won the title? Oh, everybody congratulated Brock. You know, he was one of the youngest champions in history, I think behind Randy Orton. But, um, what was the first question? Just how did, where do you rank this summer slam all time? Oh gosh, man. Top two. It really it has is. to be at and, the and, top. And, you know, and I had some great matches with Eddie Guerrero, uh, Brock Lesnar. I had that triple threat match with Rock and Triple H, but uh, with Ray, top two, maybe even number one. All right, there you go. Wow, uh, Matt, Matt, magnificent Matt has a question. Do you feel like this match should have went on later in the show, or were you okay with this match being the opener? I was okay with it being the opener. I knew that we would light up the fans, get them all riled up for the pay per view. That was our role. That was our job. And I was really excited to do that. And like I said before, it's the second most important match of the night. Zach Williams asked, and you talked about the Lucha Libre style and getting used to that, but how difficult was it wrestling somebody that much smaller than you, like a Rey Mysterio? If anything, it's easier. <laughs> you could throw them around. You could do whatever you want with them. That's right. uh, so I, I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think it's a huge advantage that you're the bigger person working with a smaller guy. There you go. Uh, Francis Reyes says, after watching the Brock versus Rock match, did you see Lesnar 
as a main eventer. I think you saw him as a main eventer even before that, right? Oh gosh, when he signed with the company, he yeah. was training OVW. I saw him as a main eventer. I knew that Brock Lesnar, as long as he picked up on the, the technique, I even if he didn't have the the, the the promo skills, you know, which he, you know, he he's okay at it. He's not bad. He's not great. But, uh, you know, his look, his charisma, and his athletic ability, I knew that he would be an incredible talent. Uh, Michael's up next. He says, SummerSlam 2002. What was Kurt's thoughts on his program with Ray? You've talked about how you loved it. But could Kurt have ever foreseen Ray still going strong on the main roster here in 2022? Oh, my gosh. No, not with his style. I mean, if anybody should be banged up and and, and – cooped up in their bedroom and in their bed for 24 <laughs> hours a day. It's Ray Mysterio. I know, right? what he does to his body. It's utter abuse. And I abuse my body, but Ray abuses his 10 times more. And it's amazing that he's still wrestling today. Lindsay Lopez SummerSlam 2002 is one of my favorite pay-per-views ever. Did Kurt know how great of a show that was while it was happening? And does he take credit for starting the show with such an amazing match? <laughs> of course I take credit. I'm, <laughs> I started the show. I got the fans riled up. I got them excited, but you know what? Nobody knew how good it was until after it was over. I mean, we knew the card was great, but the performances were even better. And, uh, it was a huge success. And I think it's also one of those things that as history goes on and goes on and you see some of the other cards afterwards, and you see the stars that were in that show now and where they've gone on to, you have, to, you develop a deeper appreciation for just how good that show was. You're definitely right. Definitely. Yeah. Soft custard is up next. Yes. That's a real name. He <laughs> says SummerSlam O2 two is one of my favorite pay-per-views of all time. Everybody says it. Gosh. Did all the hype around Sean's return and the main event give you and Ray extra motivation to, to, uh, to the unique start to the match. Um, you know what, uh, knowing Sean came back, uh, you know, I didn't even know who he was at this particular time. I mean, I knew about him, but I didn't know him personally. Uh, but you know, we just wanted to have the best match we possibly could. We wanted to set up our match to set up the other matches and that's what we did. We succeeded. So that's all I wanted. Here we go. Another one from my buddy, Matt M did talent know how good SummerSlam O2 was <laughs> when it was happening. <laughs> not while it was happening afterward. I think they all figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Brad Stanton. I'm a big Kidman fan. Do you think he can be plugged into any scenario? He was that good. Yes. Billy Kidman. He was a great utility guy. You know, if you need them for the main event for a world title match or, or bringing somebody up to the main event, Billy Kidman was great. I mean, if anything, I thought that this kid should have been a main eventer in WWE. I think the reason is he was a little bit undersized and, you know, because Ray Mysterio was there and he was kind of taking up the Lucha Libre style and, uh, you know, uh, the Billy face was, of it. was up there yeah. too, but yeah, Ray was the Lucha guy, you know, yeah, so he was the, the Billy had to fight it. against that. Yeah. Gotcha. Brian Haremza, uh, he talks about Ray Mysterio and he said, this was a lot to, to a lot of fans, their introduction to Ray. How important was it to you to help establish Ray as a main event guy? Also, was there any added pressure knowing it was your job to help establish him? Yes, but Ray is such a great worker. I mean, I knew the match would be awesome. I, I wasn't that concerned about him, but I knew there was up to me to establish him. And I was happy to do that. He's such a great wrestler. Not only that, he's a great individual. He's one of my best friends. I absolutely loved Ray the day I met him. And uh, I never fell out of love with him. I love the guy today. I, I would right. marry the dude. Oh, well, there you go. There's <laughs> the awesome. quote. There's the quote of the week on all wrestling headlines. <laughs> Kurt would marry Ray if he could. Uh, two, marry Ray Mysterio. <laughs> two count Kyle. Hey, Kurt is our final question of the week. We've often heard how it can't be. Uh, if you can't be on last, you want to be on first. You said it here on the show, but does it depend on the card? This SummerSlam went down as among one of the best of all time. Are you happy with your place among the card today? And would the placement in your opinion have made a difference to the quality of the match? Um, no, I think the type of match we had was a fast paced, higher paced match, uh, where we were trying to get the crowd into it. And, uh, it was our job to make sure that we kept them, uh, glued to the match. So they would be glued to the whole pay-per-view. So, uh, you know, I was glad with that position. I wanted to be on first. If I'm not on last, I was going to be on first and I was happy with that. And if you sit down today, same star, same card, Vince McMahon's looking at everybody. And he says, you two are going on first. Kurt would be totally fine with it. 
Yeah, but you, Ray and I, at this point in time, we'd be on last. <laughs> oh, there it is. Over Brock and Rock? Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, oh, a, that's, a, uh, that's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> it is, Kurt. You're, you're wild. I'm just I love kidding. It. I know, no, I know. <laughs> I know you're not. The competitor in you? No, you're not. Well, listen, next week, we're going to discuss your time in Hollywood. That's right, you big star. How you okay. got there. What, what was the plan? Some of your favorite and least favorite shows and movies to work on and the connections that you gained from it, Kurt. I can't wait for that one. This is going to be a doozy, you're right? <laughs> it's going to be a, doozy. a lot of B movies. <laughs> I hope we have clips. God, I hope we have clips. Yeah, I hope gonna so be, too. Gonna, gonna be good. And uh, before we get out of here this week, man, guys, listen, check out adfreeshows.com. Uh, we're having a huge event a week from uh, today as this drops. We're going to be in Chicago. Kurt and I are doing a big time stage show. Uh, we're really looking forward to that together. Uh, but man, that's that's what it's all about: getting together as fans, getting to do things. Kurt's going to do meet and greets, all 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 kinds of things, plus all the other talent that's going to be there. Check out ad free shows. You get bonus watch alongs with Kurt. Kurt, you did a Q and A session for our top guys uh, about a week or so ago. Yeah. Uh, now, Oh yeah. Q and a on the after shows. Yes, yeah. I did. yes, I did. And they're all going to be there in Chicago. They're oh. all going to be there. They're all going to be there to see you. So it's great. Uh, also don't forget physically fit.com for those chicken snacks, Kurt, that's how you're getting lean, mean, and you're still looking like that fighting machine. You're so showing me the that's Sriracha right. chicken snacks and snack, smart, crispy protein bites. There are 11 different flavors. Go to physically fit.com to order yours. If you use promo code 20, uh, you get, uh, or angle pod. Angle Pod is the promo code. Uh, you use that, you get 20% off your first order, or you can become a lifetime member online on the website and get 20% off forever. There you go. Also, check them out, KurtAnglebrand.com. That's where you can find T-shirts. You can find cowboy hats. You can find the place to get cameo videos. Well, Kurt will send you a video of himself talking directly to you or someone you love with whatever message you want. And I'm telling you, lots of stuff to check out over there. So check it out, KurtAnglebrand.com. Also, you can get that belt that's right directly behind my shoulder right now, that real American Hero Championship belt. Only five ever made. Kurt has one. I have one. And there's one left, Kurt. One belt left. So go to WildcatBelts.com. You want to check it out, you can go to how you can contact them. There's an email address. You can place your order there. One left. That's it. And uh, Kurt, man, that wraps us up. There's no more uh, podcasts at the plate to promote because you and I have done that. We've worked together in Wisconsin. And uh, so we uh, appreciate all the fans that came out for that and got to see Kurt live and get a picture and sign an autograph. But Kurt, this has been a fun show, man. Thanks for doing it this week. Thank you, Paul. appreciate it. I had a blast. I did as well. On behalf of the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, this is Paul Bromwell. We're going to see you right back here again next week on... The Kurt Angle Show.